So welcome to uh, module two of the course control of mobile robots. In module one, we introduced control theory as a way of dealing with uh, systems in general. And in this module, we're going to introduce mobile robots as the key target application in the course. And what we're going to do is start with a very simple question. How do I drive a robot from point A to point B, or in this case, from a blue ball to a yellow sun. And uh, the first question we need to understand before we can even answer how to drive it is what do we need? Well, obviously, we need to measure where the sun is or the goal point is and somehow turn this into a control action. So we're taking the information from the sun and we're feeding it into the controller. So one of the things we need is to design the controller, which we kind of know a little bit about already. We also need to understand what information the robot actually has. So we're going to have to discuss a little bit about how do robots actually gain information about the world and of course for that we need sensors. So we need to discuss sensor models at a sufficient level of abstraction so that we can reason about them but they need to be rich enough so that we can trust that the information that our controller is based on is actually something that the robot has. And then finally in order for the controllers to be useful we need to be able to basically predict how they're going to influence the robot. So we're going to need models. So what I'm going to do in this module is to discuss robot models. And in particular, we're going to look at differential drive robot mod, uh, mobile robots. And we're going to discuss sensors. And we're going to look at uh, sensors that allow us to gain information about the world around us and sensors that allow us to know something about our internal state. For instance, where is the robot? Uh, what we will not do is do any advanced perception. We're just going to look at abstracted sensor models that give us the type of, of information that we want. But before we even do that, whenever you try to design controllers for robots to drive around in the world, there are two facts that you really have to embrace. And the first is that the world is fundamentally unknown. You're not going to know where every chair in the building is. You're not going to know where every tree in the forest is when you are driving in the forest. So there is no way you can plan in advance exactly what the robot should be doing. The second is people move chairs, people move around. The wind makes trees blow uh, or sway. So the world is actually changing and dynamic and for that reason it's also a bad idea to try to produce in advance a very complicated monolithic controller for doing everything. So instead what we do in robotics a lot of times is we divide the control task into chunks and then we design controllers for those individual chunks. So for instance if I'm a robot trying to get to a goal I may have some kind of controller that's taking me to the goal and then when something shows up in the environment I switch to another controller that allows me to avoid that thing in the environment. And in fact uh, these primitive building blocks that from our point of view are different controllers in robotics they're called behaviors. So behaviors are going to be key concepts in this course and we're going to design quite a few of them and I just want to mention a handful of very standard behaviors that we will indeed see. Go to goal is the most basic one, which means drive to a, a waypoint or target location. Avoid obstacles is absolutely crucial, meaning don't slam into things on the way over there. Then if you're you know, in an office environment, you know that the world is typically straight lines, walls, so follow wall is not a bad type of behavior to have. If the goal is moving, you may want to track it instead of just going to static goal, and so forth and so forth. We'll see quite a few of these different behaviors. And I would like to start with a video here of a robot that I was developing or working on that used camera information to build up a map of what the world looked like. And here is what the robot is doing when it's based on a planner. Here it's seeing something and it's kind of uh, putting it in the map and then it's thinking up a new long plan to, for the robot to take. So basically you saw the robot spending a, a large amount of time dealing with new information because it had to replan. So now we're running the exact same thing with behaviors. So we're following a plan, well it is in fact follow plan behavior, and then when something pops up we're switching to an avoid obstacle behavior. So now the same thing switches up in the, or shows up to the robot. Instead of the robot sitting around thinking for a long time, it just avoids it. And once it's clear it goes back to following the, 
the, the plan. So this would be an example of why behaviors are really useful. Here is another example. This is actually a Segway robot, so the dynamics is very complicated. And never mind this, the, the moving graphs in the lower, uh, lower part of the picture. What I want you to see is that this robot is actually, in this case, switching between different arc behaviors. So there are different arcs that the robot can take, and the behaviors in this case are follow various arcs. So now you can put behaviors that are not as simple as just go to goal, and instead the behaviors would be arcs of various sizes and shapes. And we will become quite good at understanding how to design these individual behaviors and as well how to combine them.